Hi, I'm John Rulis and welcome to the third in my series of videos about recollections of Philip College in Canberra in 1976 and 1977 and my experiences in the ACT education system in the 1970s. Um, now, Philip College was an experiment more than anything else. It was put together fairly quickly. It was a product of the Whitlam era. And the idea was to rush everything through and get it up and running as quickly as possible for fear that um, the Labor government, the Whitlam government, wouldn't be in office for very long. And as it turned out, the ACT college system was formulated and put in, into effect, well, I think probably only within about 18 months. We first found out about it in uh, 1974, in year, year 9, in Melrose High. And 1975, we had a series of meetings throughout the year with the new principal, um, a fellow named John Morrow who um, we asked questions and he told us how, how the thing would run and everything. And, um, and then at, in late January 1976, we were there in class in the college system. Now, um, as it turned out, a Fraser government had been in office for two months that <laughs> and the college system in the ACT had just gone past the point of no return and the Fraser government had to go through with it. Um, for the first six months or so it operated on the Whitlam government's budget. It was incredible. You'd, something broke down and straight away it was fixed. But after that with the cutbacks of the Fraser government um, they, they had to try and streamline it and run it a lot more efficiently. Now um, the system began uh, late last week of January at the normal time when school began. Now we turned up on that day and the school was a construction site. The school was still a construction site. It, we, we went into the, the hall and there was a great big mound of dirt in the hall and, and bricks and that and the principal told us to come back in a week's time when the place would be cleaned up and in a habitable condition for lessons. So we came back and, you know, th things had been cleaned up a bit, but it was still a construction site. Um, they, for the, for the whole first term of 1976, we had construction workers walking in and out of the classrooms, walking around the school. Um, and back then, there was no OH&S, no high-vis work shirts or, or anything like that. The construction workers just wore short stubby shorts, which were shorter than footy shorts. They were, um, and most of them wore no shirts. It was, it was incredible when I think about it that you had construction workers working, walking around the place half naked, walking into the classrooms uh, uh, unannounced. If that had happened today, there would be a huge inquiry, a, a huge outcry. But with the standards of the 1970s, you know, um, anything goes. And, and that sort of thing, we had to put up with it. So anyway... Um, the thing which struck me on that, that first, when we first got there, on that first day when we were sent home, I and a group of other kids walked around the school and we, we saw behind the scenes, we saw areas of the school which were closed off to us after um, lessons began. We saw the janitor's flat, we saw the back of the canteen, we saw all of these areas which were out of bounds um, when when we started lessons and the thing that struck me most of all was um, as, I, as I mentioned in the last video it was this was a system for the 1970s and beyond futuristic 
They had all these lofty ideals about, about new age learning and all this sort of thing. And in every classroom, there was a colour TV. It was, um, this was pre-digital, they were the old analogue TVs, great big 26 inch TVs on stands, on tripods, and some of them were on brackets up against the wall. They didn't have tuners in them. They plugged into a port on the wall and there was a control room downstairs um, where, which had two large video recorders and players. Now, this was the era be before home video, before VHS, before beta, before anything like that. And these machines were semi-professional machines called U-Matic format. And the tape cassettes were about the size of a ream of paper. And now, you have to understand that back then, um, there was no um, renting out of the videos to schools because, well, Phillip College was probably the only school in Australia which had video. Um, the format back then was still 16 millimeter films, which the National Library held a, a big bank of them and rented them out to schools. So the only thing that the videos were used for was taping things off the TV. I remember um, they taped The Wizard of Oz when it premiered on Australian television in, I think, May 1976. And they taped at other shows as well. And but these colour TVs, they it never really worked right. The the picture was always distorted, the colour was always looked funny, it, it never really worked. And the stra the funny thing about it was that there was a really strange set of priorities here because the library in the school had no books or oh, they had very few books and all of the money had been spent on the colour TVs and the audio visual element and we used to joke that this was the only library in the world where you could stand up one end of the room <laughs> look through all of the stacks all of the shelves and see the wall on the other side because there were no books in the stacks. Um, I think that the auxiliary, the PNC, or whoever, I think that they did manage to get some spending, more spending on books, because as the two years continued, more and more books were in the library. So it did start to look like a, a respectable library after a while. And um, the other thing is I was involved in, I mentioned registered courses um, in the last video, which were uh, extracurricular courses. I was involved in something called the Sight and Sound Society, which coordinated the audio-visual element. It started off being run by the media teacher, one of the media teachers, and um, it was taken over by, by the end of 1977. It was run virtually by the students themselves. We had a, a radio station, a school radio station, and it was just broadcast over the PA system. We used to bring in our own records and um, play them on the, on the radio. It was during the mid-session, which was two hours from 12 noon through to 2 o'clock. And also in 1977, we also had a breakfast show, believe it or not, between 8, 8 o'clock and 8.30, because... Um, school start, lessons started at 8.30 and some kids came early and were there up in the common room and so we broadcast between 8 o'clock and 8.30 and um, oh, I, I remember some kids brought in records and got them played and everything uh, oh, it was fairly good fun and um, the other thing that, that they did was um, they had things for animation and animation stand. We had um, film cameras, Super 8 film cameras that, that the kids could rent out and make their own movies. 
um, that that was that was a fun element, a, a good element that I really went for because I was really into the media and all that sort of thing. Now, um, the other thing that I, I remember in the last video I mentioned um, careers advice and something called the Jack form. Um, I've had a couple of emails from people wondering what the Jack form was, what what it stood for. It stood for Joint Admission Centre for Colleges and Universities, um, J A double C, and we filled that out. And as as I mentioned, I. I basically went into panic mode because at the end of 1977 there were all of these scare stories in the media about youth unemployment how you know the 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 baby boomer kids were all finishing school that there was no jobs for them but I got a job straight away I sat the public service test in the August September holidays of 1977 and within a week <laughs> I got a telegram a telegram was an early form of email which was delivered to your front door which offered me a job in the public service and I phoned them up and I asked for it to be put on hold until I finished school and about um, two weeks before I finished school I phoned them up again and said you know I'm ready to start on the 21st of November and they got in touch with me again and I started in the public service on the 21st of November and I didn't have a break between the end of school and um, the start of employment. Harking back to what I said about when um, Philip College started, the building, which is now occupied by Canberra College, which Philip College changed its name to Canberra College, um, Woden Campus, it was designed for 300 students. <laughs> now, the first year of Philip College, 1976, there were actually 950 students and the second year there was 1150 students I mean this was the baby boomer era you know and and the architect just designed it for 300 students we had classes in corridors we had classes out on the the, the deck outside it was it was really remarkable and um and that was it, the science labs were all open plan, which means you had one corner, you had one class, um, you had another corner, you had another class, another corner, you had another class again. And, and the amount of interference between the, the classes was incredible, you know, but that was open plan, that was the 1970s. Anyway, that's about it for this instalment. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I've, uh, you know, it's funny, once I've started these videos, I keep, I keep remembering more and more things about it, so I've got enough material for a couple more of these videos, so I hope you're enjoying them, and I'll, I'll be back again to tell you more about Philip College, but in the, in the interim, I say goodbye again, goodbye, farewell. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.